Hi friends, welcome to Yeshfame classes. Today we will discuss about oxidation of triacylglycerides or triacylglyceric acid that is also known as TGA. We have already discussed about the biosynthesis of triacylglycerides. Today we will discuss about its oxidation. TGA with the help of enzyme that is lipase it breaks into its constituent molecules that is three fatty acids and one molecule of glycerol glycerol as we know its structure it is ch2oh chOH ch2oh if we remove these two uh, hydrogen then it will become dihydroxy acetone at this point it will give one molecule of atp it will become ch2oh c double bond o and ch2o phosphate group now this compound we know as dh AP dihydroxy acetone phosphate which is the intermediate of glycolysis so glycerol is oxidized through glycolysis now in today's video we will discuss how fatty acids are oxidized we know that these fatty acids may be of uh, saturated fatty acids or unsaturated fatty acids unsaturated fatty acids we can further classify into a uh, mono unsaturated fatty acids and poly unsaturated fatty acid in today's video we will discuss about saturated fatty acids and that is the even chain or odd chain so in today's video we will discuss how saturated fatty acids of even chain are oxidized now let's understand about fatty acid oxidation before fatty acid are beta oxidized they are activated with the help of one molecule of ATP and a molecule of coenzyme A. Fatty acid molecules at this point becomes acyl coenzyme A. Now this acyl coenzyme A is beta oxidized to acetyl coenzyme A which is a two carbon compound so each beta oxidation round releases two carbon acetyl coenzyme A now let's see how it takes place beta oxidation of fatty acid in animal cells it takes place in mitochondria in plant cells, beta oxidation takes place in peroxisome and a specialized peroxisomes that is known as glyoxisomes. Each beta oxidation round includes four important reactions R1, R2, R3, R4. In reaction 1, a molecule of hydrogen is released in the form of FADH2 and that process is dehydrogenase because hydrogen is released in next reaction a, a water molecule is added that process is hydration again a molecule of hydrogen is released in the form of NADH and that process is dehydrogenation now last reaction in which two carbon compound acetyl coenzyme a is released 
and the remaining fatty acid undergo another round of beta oxidation. Now, uh, let's see uh, why this uh, oxidation is known as beta oxidation because uh, this oxidation takes place at beta carbon position and at this position alkane group is changed into ketone group and this part we need to focus on that at beta position alkane will change into keto group that we will see in this subsequent slide so friends let's take a fatty acid molecule so here we take palmitic acid which is a 16 carbon compound and saturated fatty acids as we see it is a 16 carbon compound means it is a, a even carbon chain fatty acid so palmitic acid is a 16 carbon this is carbon 1 and 12 carbon 13 14 15 and 16 carbon so you see here that uh, the position uh, third from carboxylic acid is beta carbon and at second it is alpha carbon so as we discussed in the previous slide that before beta oxidations to occur this this fatty acids should be activated so one molecule of ATP and one molecule of coenzyme A activate palmitic acid or fatty acids into a palmitoyl coenzyme A or acyl coenzyme A. So we see, see here that coenzyme A comes at the uh, uh, carboxylic acid side. Now uh, we see that this beta carbon and this alpha carbon as we discussed earlier that we have to bring ketone group at the beta position so a molecule of FADH2 is formed when two, hyd when two hydrogen atoms are released so see one hydrogen from beta position and one hydrogen from alpha position are released so it becomes those we see the direction is opposite so this position is trans this delta indicates unsaturation second bond uh, uh, sorry double bond is known as in so that is enoyl in plus acyl that is enoyl coenzyme A. So at this position we see unsaturation is coming. So uh, this compound is known as delta 2 means unsaturation is at carbon 2. Enoyl coenzyme A now further a molecule of water is added so you see here OH group comes to beta position and H goes to alpha C OH comes at beta position and H is coming this so at beta position we have hydroxyl group so this compound is known as beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme A. Now we have seen this O group, OH group has come here. So objective is to bring ketone group. If we remove this hydrogen and this hydrogen, then we will have C and O. So in next reaction, NAD converts into NADH, two hydrogen atom from beta position are removed 
and it becomes ketone group. So what we have seen, alkene group, which was present, this, uh, let's use different color, so this, so beta position, this alkene group is converting into keto group. So this is the beta oxidation and in the last reaction which is catalyzed with the help of thiolase with the help of thiolase a, a molecule of coenzyme A is utilized this is COASH now this will become CS3COS coenzyme. So this is the acetyl coenzyme A is released and this COA comes at beta position. So a remaining amino uh, uh, sorry a remaining fatty acid is two carbon short. So this fatty acid is of 14 carbon which undergoes further beta oxidation rounds and convert into 8 acetyl coenzyme A molecules. So we know that acetyl coenzyme is 2 carbon so fatty acid if it is of 16 carbon so after seven rounds of beta oxidation, it will convert into eight acetyl coenzyme A. And how many uh, NADH or FADH2 are produced? So uh, it will be seven Na. TH and 7 FA TH2 molecules are produced. So how these molecules are involved in the synthesis of ATP that we will see in the next slide. Now friends let's uh, uh, see the ATP yield from fatty acid beta oxidation. So as we have seen in the example of uh, palmitic acid, suppose a uh, N-carbon chain of fatty acid, which is of even carbon. So if it is divided by 2, that will give us number of acetyl coenzyme A formed. If uh, uh, we uh, 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 reduce it by 1, it will tell us about the number of rounds of beta oxidation and the number of NADH and number of FADH. So as FADH2, as we have seen in the case of palmitic acid which is a 16 carbon compound divided by 2 so that will give us 8 acetyl coenzyme A and minus 1 so that will give us 7 NADH and 7 FADH2 so these two uh, molecules enter into electron transport chain and will convert into ATP molecules and 8 acetyl coenzyme A will go to tricarboxylic acid cycle and will produce FADH2 and NADH2. So here 3 NADH and 1 FADH2 molecules are produced. So let's calculate 
how many uh, now let's calculate how many ATP molecules are produced from 16 carbon fatty acid that is palmitic acid fine so you remember this thing that uh, uh, one molecule of acetyl coenzyme a will give 10 moles of atp molecules one nadh will give 2.5 moles of ATP and one molecule of FADH2 will give 1.5 moles ATP. So in palmitic acid, let's calculate ATP yield. So how many acetyl coenzyme a so 8 acetyl coenzyme a from one molecule of palmitic acid 7 nadh and 7 fadh2 so on the basis of ATP molecule synthesized per molecule. Let's calculate. So it will be 8 into 10, then 7 into 2.5, and 7 into 1.5. So it will be 80.0. This is ATP yield. Now it will be uh, 7 5 za 35, then 7 to za 14, 14 and 3. So it will be 17.5. Now this is 35 and 7, it will be 10.5. So let's calculate this is 0. This is 8 and this is 10 so total ATP molecules formed it is 108 now net ATP formation would be one would be 108 minus so it will be 108 minus 2 because two molecules uh, 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 are utilized in the activation of fatty acids. So it will be 106 ATP molecules from 16 carbon palmitic acid. The energy of uh, uh, energy utilized in the activation of fatty acids that is equivalent to two molecules of ATP. Though we were using one molecule of ATP, but pyrophosphate was uh, uh, releasing from there. So uh, that that's why we are reducing it by two. Now let's take uh, uh, another fatty acid which is of 18 carbon and that is steric fatty acid it is also a even carbon chain so acetyl coenzyme 
formed would be 18 divided by 2 so it will be 9 acetyl coenzyme minus 1 will give you number of FADH2 and number of NADH2 so it will be 8 8 now ATP yield would be uh, 9 into 10 ATP this would be 8 into 2.5 and this is for FADH2 and it is 8 into 1.5 so it would be 9.0 and it will be 8 5 is 40 and it will be 20 now 8 5 is 40 and it is 12 now let's calculate it this is 0 this is 2 this is 11 this is 122 so these are the total ATP moles from one molecule of stearic acid now net would be 122 minus 2 so answer would be 120 molecules moles of ATP will form from 18 carbon fatty acid that is here is stearic acid so in next video we will see uh, uh, the example of saturated fatty acid but odd carbon chain till then bye bye